Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest version of Automation Hour. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, depending on when you're watching the recording. We are thrilled you're here. So we'll get started by going through our housekeeping slides as usual. So first up, we've got some logistics. So everyone's line is muted. We do have the ability for you to post questions here in the questions widget or also on the Automation Hour Trailblazer community. We'll be monitoring both throughout the session. We are recording and we'll, we'll uh, post the recording to our YouTube channel uh, after we're done today. As always, we invite you to engage with us uh, anywhere that makes sense for you. We are on the Trailblazer community. We have a website with all of our upcoming and past presentations. Um, we are also on Twitter and now brand new on LinkedIn, as well as have a YouTube channel where we post all those sessions. So we hope you will join us for some upcoming sessions. We still have a lot for the first half of the year and we are busy getting ready to start planning the second half. So those of you who are interested in presenting, please reach out to Rakesh or myself and uh, keep an eye out for our call for presenters. Uh, probably in early April is when that will get uh, posted. So we absolutely cannot bring these to you without the help of our sponsors. First is Active Campaign, uh, who is a recently new sponsor and our uh, sponsor from the very beginning for the entire six year run of Automation Hour is the next sponsor up, Concrete.io. So we wanna say thank you to them. Without their support, we would not be able to bring this to you every other week uh, at no cost. So that's pretty awesome. And we wanna make sure we say thank you. As always, we got to give a shout out to the three who created the Automation Hour program and got it rolling. So Dave, Jen, and Rakesh, uh, hats off to you. And as we all know, as time goes on, things tend to change. So your current co-presenters are uh, Rakesh and myself. So with that, I am thrilled to introduce to you a brand new presenter to Automation Hour, the lovely and talented Bree Jana. So with that, Bree, I am going to send it over to you. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming today. I'm very excited to be here. This is my first time presenting on Automation Hour. Um, since you can see my face already through the video, I instead provided a picture of my dog, who is, uh, you know, a great model for all the photos that I take. Um, I am a certified. Salesforce Certified Administrator and a Trailhead Ranger. I have about five years of experience as an admin and implementation specialist for a partner company. I currently live in Michigan on the west side of the state in Kalamazoo, which is indeed a real place. Many people don't believe that. Some things that I'm looking forward to are getting my platform app builder certification and exploring Flow Orchestrator a little bit more. I haven't gotten to jump into it very deeply yet, but I'm very excited about all the things that that, all the opportunities that that's gonna bring. And aside from Salesforce, some things that I enjoy are Galinda, my dog here, and as I like to call her, my supervisor. She sits and makes sure I get my work done with me. I enjoy baking, uh, cross-stitching, and my recent obsession is edible glitter, which I highly recommend, really elevates your, your drinks in the evening. So on to the actual um, solution here. So today we're gonna look at round robin assignment using Salesforce Flow. I'm gonna start by giving some background to where the solution came from for my current org. Um, so like where the initial idea came from and then also some other options because there are a lot of ways that you can handle this and it really just depends on your use case and your org. And then we'll go through our fake business use case for today, um, look at the components that were built to make this happen and then demo and have some time for questions. So to give a little bit of background on the solution, currently I work for a credit union and we have a legacy org that is also a built on a, a partner company and there is um, a lot of technical debt and so we've had some trouble um, sometimes adjusting the existing systems without kind of setting other things out of whack so what happened was we we currently have uh, the custom objects i'm going to show you existed already in our org 
And then we also have um, some code, some Apex, that was taking referrals. So when a teller um, at a branch decides to um, talk to a member about a, a new product that they may like, they can submit a referral and the member service advisor can then follow up. So we already had some existing Apex that was going through and assigning those based on the branch. Um, we had a new use case that came up where they wanted to assign some loan applications that were coming in through our system. And so we wanted to find something that would work similarly to the Apex without actually messing with the Apex. We wanted to use the, um, we wanted to be using it on a custom object because the loan object was a custom object um, built by the partner company. We wanted something free and we wanted something easy to troubleshoot. So that is kind of how I ended up at the solution that I'm about to show you today. Um, that said, there are many other options for round robin. So depending on the need of your organization, um, there are several options at the App Exchange that you can check out. There are a couple kind of um, hacks that people have written various blog posts about, and I believe those will be in the notes when the video is sent out. Um, most of those use either um, auto number or formula field, and then they kind of use that to manipulate the lead assignment rules a little bit. So those are mostly specific to the lead object. So that's why I didn't go that route. And then as I mentioned before, you can use Apex, which is how the round robin for our referrals was initially set up, um, but we didn't want to go in and try to uh, update that at all because we didn't know what else it would affect. So, but depending on the volume that you need to have at your org, you may want to go that route. Um, if you have a really high volume of assignments coming through, Apex is obviously going to offer a little bit more flexibility there. So on to our use case. Uh, usually I go with Harry Potter, but I decided to slightly update my reference. So this time we're going with Schitt's Creek, which if you haven't seen it, is a show I highly recommend. Um, so the Schitt's Creek Motel or the Rosebud Motel um, is what we're going to look at today. We're going to pretend that they got a huge upgrade and now they have Salesforce. Stevie and members of the Rose family need to take turns cleaning out the motel room when a guest checks out. So every time a checkout cleaning task is created in Salesforce, it needs to be assigned to the person whose turn it is next. They also need to be able to take into account if someone's on vacation or unavailable to get assignments for a certain amount of time. So now I'm just gonna walk through um, the components that I built to make this happen. So these first two are custom objects. And this is what I mentioned um, in, at my company's org. These already existed. What I really like about doing this with the custom objects and the flow is that it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of having as many different groups as you need. So for example, at the credit union, we have uh, a group of um, users that we refer to as the loan queue, um, but they have they handle several different assignments. Um, so they get loans in that they work, but they also get leads in that they work. So we could take those same users and put them in as many groups as we needed um, and make sure that they're getting assigned everything equally based on the group and based on the record that are getting assigned. So we start with a custom object for assignment group. Um, this is a very simple object. So I just did a name field with text so you can call your group whatever you'd like. And then I added a custom pick list field for which object that group was related to assigning records for. Uh, that is really just reference. So you can use it if it's helpful. If you're using this on the same object all the time, maybe you don't need that. And then also, um, because this is gonna be a master detail relationship with the next object, you can do a roll up. So I did a custom roll up adding the number of group members. Um, that also is totally optional. It's just if that's a helpful reference to you or not. Um, one more note about these two objects. I used assignment group and assignment group member for my object names. However, I know that group member is already a native object in Salesforce and relates to chatter and some other things. So um, if that is confusing for you or you don't like those names, you can name them whatever you want. Um, I just was going with what we already were using. 
Um, so the child object here is going to be the assignment group member. And for that, um, for the name field, I used an auto number for this, and that's namely because I thought that using the username in two places would be kind of confusing. And then you have to create your master detail relationship field up to the assignment group. Here you do want to use a master detail instead of a lookup because you don't want assignment group members to be able to exist without being part of the assignment group. And then a user field that's a custom lookup field to the user object. So that's how you're going to um, attach this group member to a specific user in your org. I created three date time fields, out of office start, out of office end, and last assignment date. And again, you can call these whatever you want. I just use out of office to keep it general. Um, and I use date time for these because potentially, uh, depending on the situation, so at the credit union, for example, um, a loan application could come in in the evening and our member service advisors or our loan queue members are not necessarily working then, but you know, if someone's um, vacation starts the next day and something comes in in the evening, we don't want it to be assigned to them. So giving a date time instead of just a date field allows a little more flexibility to say, okay, as soon as this person is um, off the clock, we stop assigning to them so that things don't sit there while they're out of town. Um, however, if that's more specificity than you need, you could also very easily do this with date fields. And then the last assignment date, you do want to be a date time because that is going to be basically a timestamp saying every time someone is assigned a record. And then there is a custom formula field checkbox that tells us if this person is active, which in this case is just referring to are they active to receive assignments within this group? So whatever you're assigning, can they get it? Um, in this case, my criteria was pretty simple. It's basically, is the user active? And then are they not out of office? Um, however, you may have additional criteria that you want to look at to determine if they're active to receive assignments or not. And then the final is a status field, and that's a custom formula. Uh, it's a text field, but I used images. That's completely optional. It just um, allows you to have kind of a little more visual, quick look at which of your group members are currently actively receiving assignments and which are not. So to go through those formulas in a little bit more detail, for the active field, I decided to first create a formula to determine if someone's out of the office or not. Um, for some people, this might seem like a little too Rube Goldberg to have a formula that refers to another formula. Um, I did this because in the event that we were to add a lot more criteria to that active field, it would kind of help parse out the different criteria that we're looking at in terms of what makes someone active or not in their assignment group. That said, you don't need this. You could do it all in one formula. Um, so, But I started by identifying, are they out of the office? Um, and then I went on to make the, so are they active to receive assignments? Like I said, here our criteria is pretty simple. Basically, we want to make sure that um, if they're not active or if they are out of the office, that they're not marked active. Sorry, I know I'm saying active law. Hopefully that's not super confusing. And then the final formula field I have is that status indicator, which as I mentioned is completely optional. Uh, however, I think it's really nice. We had it in our org already on these objects, and I find it very helpful to have that quick um, colored you know, visual indicator of who's active and who's not. And then if you wanted to click in to the people who are inactive, you can see you know, why that may be. So are they on vacation? If not, you can check their user and see if the user is inactive for some reason. The other benefit to making sure that you uh, make sure that your user record is active is that if you deactivate a user before you remove them from all your assignment groups, they will immediately stop getting any assignments. In order to make this formula, I used some graphics from the Lightning Graphics Pack, um, which is a free resource that you can access. I believe I got it through the App Exchange. 
and um, but you could also just use static resources to reference those little icons if you wanted to use something like that. You can find them in a lot of different ways. All right, any questions so far? Nope. Lost my mute button. Uh, so we have Ruth who wanted to chime in that her dog Juniper is uh, affectionately known as her secretary, at which point I, <laughs> all of them much more useful coworkers than mine, but given that mine are cats, I'm not really surprised about that. <laughs> so, but that is the only question we've had come in so far. Awesome. All right. So the other components that I used to build this out then are several flows and then a few other uh, components that kind of help support the flows. So we have a record triggered flow um, that does the assigning and the notifying. So I'll go through that in more detail in a second. I have a screen flow that allows a user to update their own out of office dates and have that update on all the group members that that user is related to. So I'll also go through that in a little more detail in a moment. For the screen flow, I used a quick action to launch the screen flow. And I'll talk about some other options that you have there depending on your needs. And then I created an email template and an email alert to use in the record triggered flow to alert the new person who has been assigned that they have a new task. All right, so we're gonna go over to our org and look at these flows. So this is the round robin flow for cleaning tasks. The really nice thing, as I mentioned about this solution, by using the custom objects is that it is very scalable. Um, so if you wanted to use this for multiple different types of tasks, so in this case, we're using a record triggered flow on the task object. Um, we are going to, in this example, just look for a specific task type. However, if you wanted to do different rotations for different task types, you could do that all in the same flow. You would just need to add a decision element at the beginning. If you want to use this for different objects, you do need to create a separate flow. But once you've done it once, I find it very easy to translate that over to the other objects that you need it for. And then you can have as many different assignment groups, like I mentioned, as you need. So it becomes very versatile and very scalable. So in this specific example, like I said, we're doing a record triggered flow just when the record is created, and we're gonna look at the task object. The only criteria here I have is that it's a room checkout cleaning task. Um, and then because we're sending an email, we're gonna use an after save flow. Um, that is the best for this situation. So once you have your entry criteria, the first step is to get the right assignment group for whatever you are trying to round robin in this case. So we use a get records element on the assignment group object. And in this case, all I'm gonna do is look for the one that has the name, has cleaning in the name. I like to keep these a little bit more vague because sometimes when I try to do the equals, you know, if you don't get it exactly, exactly, you could have issues, but obviously you want to be careful if you have any overlap in your assignment group names. You want to make sure you're as specific as you need to be to get the results that you want. And in this case, we only need the first record and I'll just have it automatically store all the fields. The next step is to get the group members that are related to that assignment group. And thanks to our sort order here, we can do this all in one step. You could also potentially break out the, the sort because um, now there is some new elements that can help you with that. Um, but in this case, we can do it all in one. So I did it that way. We're gonna do a get records for assignment group members. And the conditions are, are they an active member? And are they part of the assignment group that we just got? So we went and got that assignment group and we want the assignment group on the members to equal the one that is related to this specific round robin. After that, we're gonna do our sort order. So put everything in ascending order by last assignment date. What that's gonna do is give us the person who was least recently assigned something. 
So who is next up in line? And we're only going to take that first record. Then we automatically store all fields. And now we have our person. So this is the person who is next up in line to receive something. This is who we want to assign. So then we can go into the task and add that person as the owner. We're going to use the task record that triggered the flow. And the only thing that in this case we need to assign um, or update on the record is the owner ID. And we're going to use the user ID from the group member that we just got. And then we need to do some assigning on the group member record itself. Basically, an update that says this group member just got assigned something just now. So this is that kind of timestamp I was telling you about. We're going to set the last assignment date on the group member record to the current date and time. And so that's going to kind of put them back at the end of the line again. And then we're going to update that record um, just using the existing record variable that we already have in here. And then the final step here is to alert the person who was just assigned this new task. Now, depending on what other um, settings you have, what other workflows or email notifications you already have in your org, you may or may not need this. So you want to be conscious of not just blindly adding this because potentially, um, you know, if you already have activity notifications and you're doing this on a task, someone may just get that notification already. Um, in this case, I added it in because it was necessary. It was part of the use case that was brought to us when we created the solution. Um, so I just added this in as an example. But this is where I go ahead and use that email alert that I mentioned earlier that I've been created. Um, and then I just pass in the record ID. So fairly simple. Um, any questions about that one? Yes. So Jeremy asked us a question and said, hi there. Why do you need the assign group member and update group members? Could you not just have an update group member? Yes. So because um, if you're on a record triggered flow, um, and uh, Michelle or Rakesh, correct me if I'm wrong, but on a record triggered flow, you can just use an update if you're updating the record that triggered the flow. If you're updating a different record, you have to do it in the two steps is my understanding. So I think technically you could go straight to an update and instead of making the assignments in an assignment and then using that variable for the update, most of the time updates have the ability for you to find the record and specify all the fields individually. So I think that's more of a matter of preference. And also as you continue to do additional things with some of these flows, if you put it into an assignment, and then update that record as just that record variable if you need to branch it out make different assignments based on different criteria or add additional items in there uh, it's easier to do that through a series of assignments or the only way to do branching would be through different assignments so i think for this flow it's probably dealer's choice or builder's choice um, personally i prefer to have the assignment and the update separate because my brain likes it that way um, I can clearly see where I'm setting those values and then the update is just making all of those changes into the database. But Jeremy, to your point, yes, I think you could do it either way. Awesome. Okay, so the next flow is, this is what allows group members to go in and update their own PTO. Um, there's a lot that you can do with this that I just haven't yet for lack of time. Um, the way that I set it up in this case is with a screen flow that's going to use the ID of the running user. So in that case, I can go in and I can update my PTO. It doesn't help me update any other people's PTO. So depending on your org, um, if you want users to be able to do it themselves, or in some places they may want managers to be the ones handling that. If you wanted managers to be able to do it, you would need to add some extra steps so that the manager could choose a user and then update based on that user. 
Uh, so I'll show you how I built this, but just keep in mind that again, depending on your use case in your org, there's a lot of options on how you could kind of slightly vary this to make it a little more flexible. So the first thing we're doing in the screen flow is to get the group member record. And we're gonna get all of the group member records related to the specific user who's running this flow. And the reason is because a user could be related to multiple different group member records. So maybe they're only in one round robin group, but if they're in multiple, you wanna be able to update it all at once. So the condition is that we're looking for the user field on the assignment group member equaling the current user ID. That's for the running user. And then in this case, we're gonna get all the records and store them in a collection variable, or the system will automatically store them in a collection variable for us. Next, we have our screen, which is pretty straightforward. We're basically just saying, when are you not gonna be in the office starting when, and when will you be back? And then they hit finish and the user is done. Everything else happens behind the scenes. So then we have to loop through the group members. And we're just gonna use that, like I said, that collection variable that was created for us. Doesn't really matter which direction you go. And we're gonna do, I have two assignment elements here because when I did it all together, it wasn't working. And I don't know exactly why, but that's why I did it this way in this case. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign in this one, I'm gonna go ahead and assign the out of office start and the out of office end with the input from those screens. So I'm gonna say on this group member record that we're currently looking at in the loop, do the start and do the end that that user gave us. And then I'm gonna go ahead and assign again. And in this case, I've created this collection variable called group members to update. And to that collection variable, I'm going to add the current item that we're looking at. So the current group member item. We'll do that for each of the group member records that we have. And then outside of the loop, we'll update them. And I just went ahead and threw in that record collection variable created group members to update. Um, any questions on this one before we look at an example? Uh, no more questions at this point. So okay. I do have one on my own actually while I'm thinking about it. How do you train your users to put in the right out of office start? Because for my <laughs> <laughs> like it's not I'm leaving Friday on vacation and I'm gone the whole next week so Friday at five is when I'm out of the office it'd be like oh I'm out of the office first thing Monday morning so how do you how do you work with that if they forget to kind of deal with the evening before right um that is a great question we have this piece of the solution that I'm showing you actually we haven't deployed yet um for the users at the org where I work um so we haven't had to kind of go through that um, I would say that you need to have very clear understanding across the board of how you want people to handle that. So whoever is going to be involved, make sure that you're talking with those users and managers uh, to set a specific way that you want to do it. Once you have that established, it would be really easy to throw in some help text right above on that screen just to say, as a reminder, you know, we want you to start your PTO at 5 p.m. the last business day before you'll be gone or however you want to phrase that. Um, but you do want to make sure you're right. That's a great point that everyone's on the same page about how you're doing that. Yeah, I, I think this is great. And then I would go and I would like just mess this up for you. So thank you. <laughs> oh, we have another question come in. So what happens if the user doesn't come back when they say they will? How will the, how will the system handle that? Um, so in that case, the, the manager should always have the ability to just go into those group members and manually update that out of office. So if someone remains out of office for some reason, I would expect that their supervisor or whoever they hopefully notified um, would go in and just update that. 
Um, if they didn't and something gets misassigned, obviously you can always manually reassign it, which is not ideal. But this this functionality does require people to maintain those dates. So you are a little, um, in this specific case, you're, you are a little bit at the mercy of your users to, to keep that properly updated. Right now in our current org, the managers handle all that. So um, if they have not updated something and have to go through and reassign them all, that's kind of on them. Um, if you're allowing the users to do it themselves, that maybe changes how you want to approach it a little bit. Yeah. Cool. We got some more questions coming in. So Ruth would like to know, what about active users? Do they get removed from groups or did you use um, an is active filter? I think she might have meant inactive. Mm. Or does Salesforce auto remove inactive users from groups? Yeah, so I um, worked that in. I'll switch over to the to the front end here to show you that. So I worked that into that active checkbox formula that I showed you. Um, Salesforce will not automatically do that. So in this case, um, we have Alexis Rose here, and I'm going to click in to see her specific assignment group member record. And you can see here she's not active. And you can also see that the out of office start and end is blank. So it's probably not because she's out of the office. So if I click on her actual user record, it will show me that she is an inactive user. So basically, um, it's that active formula that's going to take into account, are they out of the office? And are they an inactive user? And I'm pulling that data in from the user record. Gotcha. So Pat uh, chimed back in with another question on the what if they don't come back when they say they're going to. Um, so basically, if they come back for an, an appointment later than they said they would. Do you use this for partial day out of office or is this only full day out of office? And Pat, maybe you can give us a little bit more insight into um, that question. Yeah. Um, so if you use the, the date time field, you can use it for partial day. Um, if you just use if you just use a date field, you're a little bit more restricted. Um, but the date time, you can basically use it for whatever you want. So again, you would want to establish that business process with the managers of your end users so that you have consistency in that. But if you wanted to say, okay, every time you leave for lunch or every time you're on the road for three hours for a sales call, please go in and update your out of office, you could do that. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. She said something like they have a dentist appointment. So yeah, that would be partial day. Very good. Okay. I think we've got all the questions answered thus far. Awesome. All right. So um, the next part is to show you how it works on the front end. So we have our assignment groups here. So as I mentioned, you can have as many of these as you need. Um, in our org at the credit union, we probably have about 30 different assignment groups um, that we're managing. So once we actually do um, deploy that PTO feature, it will really help the, the managers um, keep everything updated. Um, but in any case, here we have a couple different examples. So there's uh, people take turns hoping, hosting happy hour at the Rosebud Hotel. They take turns uh, responding to the angry customer cases that they get and then they take turns cleaning the rooms. So we're gonna look at this room checkout cleaning. Um, so as I showed you before, we have all of our group members who are part of this group. So all the people who are in rotation to grab tasks of this nature. Um, we have our quick visual status indicator here. So we see that Johnny, Stevie, and Brianna are all available to accept those tasks right now. Um, Alexis isn't, and I showed you that was because she was an inactive user. If we look at David's, we will see that David is currently out of the office. And that is why he's not considered active at the moment. So it doesn't really matter how your records are created. At the credit union, we have a nightly data import. And so the objects that we were assigning were just getting created with that data import on a nightly basis. And then 
every record that met the criteria was triggering the flow and automatically assigning things. In this case, I'm just going to manually create one, but the same, the process is the same on the back end either way. So we have our uh, customer here, Mr. John Bond from the Grand Hotels and Resorts, and he heard how great the Rosebud Motel was doing, wanted to come check it out for himself, get some ideas for his Grand Hotel. Uh, but now he's checking out, so I'm just going to put in my details here. Um, I'm going to choose my type, and again, this is important because in this case, we use this as a criteria, so we only want to trigger it for this type of task. I want this to be completed by tomorrow, so I'm going to put in my due date, and then if you had comments, you could add them here. And I hit save. I'm going to see that this has been assigned to Stevie Blood. And this is just an example, um, but if this were Stevie's email, she would have just gotten an email saying, hey, you've been assigned a new task. And I, it, I made it very simple. Obviously, you can do a little bit more. Um, you can go into a little more detail and add a, a link to the record should you want to. Um, but I just did kind of the baseline. And then when we go back to our assignment group, we can see, you know, if we refresh, then we can see, awesome, that Stevie has just been assigned this new task. So now she kind of goes to the back of the line again. So that is how that one works. And then our update PTO. So just a note on this. Um, with the screen flow, there's a lot of different ways that you can deploy it. In this case, I kind of went the simple route because this is just a sample. I created a record specific button and then I also added it to the home screen via the lightning page. Um, I think probably a button like this would actually be most useful as a global action or something that you could put if you're a console user, potentially a utility that you could add at the bottom. Um, However, in order to do a screen flow as a global action, I learned in this process, you have to first create a lightning component, um, which Jen Lee has an awesome blog about how to do that. So I did not in this case, but that is something that you would probably want to consider doing, and there are resources to walk you through that process as well. So you could put this anywhere that it is relevant to your users. So in this case, again, um, Currently, the way that I have this set up, it's just going to update uh, my PTO when I do this. Um, so I'm going to put in the dates that I'm gone. I'm going to say at the end of this day, I'm no longer available. And then I'll be back at the end of this day. And I am part of multiple assignment groups. So this process is going to go ahead and update all of them. All right, so now I'll go check my first assignment group here. And my PTO hasn't started yet, so you'll see my status indicator is still green, still active, but it did update my dates. Awesome. And then if I check my assignment group member in a different group, I can also see here, it updated my dates here as well. So this is actually a really good segue for this. Um, so Karen popped in with a question. How does it assign tasks in the case where there are one or more people who don't yet have a value for last assignment date? Which this one that you just showed does not have one. Yes. That is a great question, actually. Um, what I did when I was creating the assignment groups initially was just go went in and randomly assigned the current time and date as um, the as as the last assignment date, so that it had something to go off of. Um, if you don't want to have to do that, like if you're creating assignment groups and they're going to have 50 users and it doesn't really make sense, you would probably need to add some criteria to the flow to adjust for an initial null value, but that will really only happen once when you're creating the groups. So in this case, 
I just went ahead and uh, manually put in something so that it had a date to go off of and then it worked from there. And that is all that I have for this. So unless there are additional questions or additional things people want to see. Perfect. Well, we will do another call for questions here. I think we've gotten through everything that is in the go to meeting. So I am also doing a less than quick, unfortunately, refresh on the Trailblazer community. Apparently, I'm taxing Chrome's to the limit today. So it's a little crabby <laughs> with me trying to refresh pages. So one question I have while we're waiting to see is about how long did it take you to build this start to finish? Hmm. Probably. So like I said, with the use case that I originally built this solution for, the assignment group and assignment group member objects already existed. So I didn't really have to deal with those. Uh, but when I rebuilt this in the demo org that you're looking at now, it probably took between five and 10 hours overall to build the objects and then the flows. Um, but when I rebuilt the flows, in this case, I had already done them once, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, initially, it did take you know a couple rounds of, of try and fail testing to get it working as we intended. I'm fairly certain you're not really working with flows until you've actually failed at least one test. But that's just <laughs> maybe having never yeah, written. I haven't built anything that doesn't fail multiple times first. But <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so we got a couple questions that came in. So Stu, hi Stu, would like to know random question. Where do you go to learn more about flow? What are your favorite resources? Oh, uh, well, I um. I just Google a lot. <laughs> Usually I, so I'm, I'm the type of person who really likes to learn by trying. So a lot of times I'll kind of work through a use case and then see what questions or issues I run into and then go and try to find the answer to those specific things. Um, but I also love to watch Automation Hour. I love to take advantage of the Trailblazer community because there's a ton of super smart people out there that are willing to help, which is awesome. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Okay, so Vuth asked, how does it handle bulk assignments? Yeah, so I guess it depends what you mean by bulk. So in the case of the credit union, we did a little bit of research to figure out about how many loans we were gonna get every day that would meet the entry criteria um, and trigger the record triggered flow. So in our case, it was, I think, somewhere around 30 records and we decided that with our limits we could handle that. Now if you are getting records via an import and you just get a ton of them every night, like you get 500 records that need to be assigned every night, um, that's a situation where you would potentially want to consider using Apex instead of Flow. Um, and the other thing about the record triggered Flow is that it is um, you're doing it record by record obviously so then in the event that you're emailing your users to let them know they've been assigned something it's going to email them every time so that's another situation where like if you have a bulk amount and your user probably doesn't want to get 30 individual emails um, then this solution the way that it's set up in this case maybe isn't going to be the best fit got it okay so I think we're done with questions, but we've got some definite accolades coming in. So Jeremy says, thank you, great session, great structure to it, very thorough and appreciate the detail. Anthony followed up on the heels of that with an awesome demo and a question, any thoughts on future enhancements such as enabling load balancing or assignment reporting? Ooh, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I did, I actually was thinking of a ton of enhancement I guess, as I was going through this. Um, the first one for my credit union would be to add that user field, like I mentioned, to the screen flow so that either someone could update their own or a manager could update it for them. So like if they are out sick, uh, obviously they can't update it themselves. Um, so to make that a little bit more versatile. Um, 
I also love the idea of assignment reporting uh, and potentially even notification for managers. So again, depending on what your use case is, they may wanna know when one of their employees or group members has been assigned something. So you could look at that. And then um, as I was looking through all of the other options that there are to do a round robin style thing, there are certainly some that have um, different criteria in terms of like the load so you know in terms of I'm trying to think of a a good example but if you want you know if you have to add in other things like I want this person to get um, two for every one that this new trainee gets or something like that um, I haven't played around with that yet but I'm sure you could work in um, or add some extra fields to your assignment group member records that would help you kind of adjust for those kinds of things a little bit and that and you could continue to make it even more versatile. Awesome. So Ruth says, yes, kudos to a great presentation. And I think she absolutely loves that when you do flow, it's much more fun to build, fail, find a fix, and a cool new addition. So Ruth, I'm with you. This is definitely my favorite thing to do as an admin too. So, and then uh, Mr. William Murphy pops in with love it, nice, clean solution, and a great presentation. So. Thanks all. I would definitely agree. All right, so we will do one last call for questions and one more refresh on the Trailblazer community. Just to make sure we catch all of our questions today. But yep, we got some more coming in. Nice job from Pat. So we definitely appreciate everyone who joined today. Um, and as a reminder, we will be posting this recording to our YouTube channel recently. So if you'd like to watch again. And it looks like um we have gone through all the questions and pat great call out apex hours definitely has some really good videos on flow for training and also the salesforce admin team actually just released a series of five short little video clips helping explain some more complicated concepts around using flow so those are uh brand new i think earlier this week or late last week uh so you can find those definitely they've been promoted on twitter in the trailblazer community for sure so check those out as well so awesome, tons more thank yous coming in. So we appreciate it. But with that, uh, looks like we can let everyone go. And as always, we appreciate you attending Automation Hour. Cody, Thanks if you on YouTube you. for Automation Hour, you will find it. Thank you. Thanks all, have a great uh, rest of your day. Thanks everyone, have a nice weekend.